And last one, here we go. Okay, here we go. So uh, the next thing um, uh, that we do in our process after the phone screening is the in-person interview. Yeah. So um, this is your chance to meet and greet, mm -hmm. sell the company, sell the role to the, um, the candidate and yeah. uh, do some more validation. So what do you do? Yeah, so uh, we recommend that you do, uh, like you said, you want to sell the company. So maybe do a, a tour of the shop or the workplace that you're in. Let them meet a couple of like the key team members that they may be working with or yeah. somebody who might be supervising them. You know, just so that they can really get a feel as to like what your organization is all about. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, validate the experience again if there was anything that came up from the resume or from the phone screen that you're kind of like oh I'd like to know more about that then um, definitely go into that um, and you know if you're not comfortable with doing interviews I would you know recommend coming up with a couple questions that really will help you guide it but don't be afraid to kind of go away from those questions if something comes up that you're like oh I really want to know more about that or you know that's that's a little interesting can you tell me more um, it doesn't have to be a structured interview sometimes those loosey-goosey fun yeah. <laughs> interviews are really how you get the best knowledge from your uh, candidate. Totally, yeah. totally. And if you're the type of person who's really nervous about interviewing candidates and you feel like, I just don't know how to ask the right questions, yeah. I need to like digest the data that I'm getting before I can ask them another really intuitive question, just find someone who's really good at interviews. You can even hire someone to come in and help you with those um, just to help you, um, you know, really uh, pick up on the cues that you're getting from the candidate during the interview. Yeah. Cool. So you finished your first in-person interview and you're ready to proceed um, further with them, okay, because they're cool people. Um, what do you do then? Yeah, so next we recommend uh, doing two things kind of in tandem. Uh, first of all is a psychometric assessment, it's kind of just to really get an overall view of the candidate and how they're going to fit within the team. Mm -hmm. uh, you can set up benchmarks, have your own team take the quizzes and see where they sit. And then it really helps build that like round team that has all the skills covered and really, really awesome. Um, but it also helps you with that single individual candidate figure out, you know, what they might need a little bit more support with, or, you know, maybe they, something surprising comes out of the test that you weren't expecting to see and you might want to ask them about it. Yeah. And then with the reference checks, you know, you're going to want to ask the candidate for, uh, we, we like a minimum of three, uh, refer referees. And from those two, I would really highly recommend trying to get direct supervisors, um, yeah. for that candidate just because they're going to be able to give you um, a really good idea of what the candidate was like and what it was like managing that candidate. Yeah. And the questions that I would have for those reference checks uh, would first of all to be validate that they actually worked there. <laughs> for the time period that they said they yeah, worked there and for. did the job that they said that they did there. And I mean, that sounds a little silly, but it, it happens <laughs> um, that people don't actually, you know, give you the correct information and you want to make sure that you have the right information. Yeah. Um, and then I would give, um, talk to the referee about how the person interacted with the team, with management, with clients, if the candidate needs to be client facing, you know, this is all important stuff that you can get from a previous uh, manager. And then the last thing would be to uh, tell the referee the job description that this person has applied, yeah. this job and the job description and ask them, do you know, do you think their skills are good for this and what do you, do you think they'll succeed in this position? And um, if what what might they need support with and you know just really get a, a rounded image of what you they think that this candidate would be able to excel at and maybe need help at um, uh, during the reference checks yeah for sure so like for example um, at Entreflow when we hire our um, our accountants so they work uh, remotely predominantly and uh, they also do client facing work and that's not something that all accountants are really awesome at oh, or anybody's really awesome like not everybody's awesome at so do we use the reference check time to talk to the referee about uh, they could be like the world's best accountant but um, you know if they can't handle working remotely um, uh, or they, they're not super confident to be to be able to provide guidance and coaching to clients in person then they're not going to be the best accountants for us so that gives you the chance to make sure that the the ref that you know that, that this candidate is actually gonna be good for this very specific job um, 
and I'm, I'm not sure if you mentioned this, but uh, with the with the references too, I recommend that you remind the candidate to ask permission and yeah. give a heads up to the referee that they're calling them. I can't tell you how many times I've called somebody to do a reference check and they're like, I, I don't think that this was a really smart idea. I have nothing nice to say about this person. <laughs> this has happened a couple of times. So, <laughs> not good. no, not, not a good, not a good referee. Uh, <laughs> um, so after you've done, so you've done your psychometric testing, maybe you've done some interesting specific testing too, if there's something really technical going on here, you wanna be able to validate that you know, they actually know what they, what they need to know. Yeah. Um, your, your psychometric testing is gonna give you some results that are gonna say this is where, what the person is like, this is where they you know, might find some challenges, or this is where they might need some extra coaching and support, and that really informs you on how your relationship needs to be um, should you hire them. Um, you've done your reference checks. Now, what do you do after that? Yeah, next, uh, we really, 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 really recommend bringing that candidate in for a second in-person interview. Yeah. You've got, in the past, however long it takes to receive back the assessment, to get your reference checks done, could be a week, could be a couple days, you really have time to reflect on that first in-person interview you've done. You know, bounce ideas off of the team, yeah. you got a chance to meet them, or maybe even sit in on the interview. Um, you've had results come back from your assessment, you've had results come back from the reference checks, and you can really drill into anything that you feel like you need to you know get more information on um, and just to make sure that one last sanity check for um, that candidate so yeah you really want to use that hour to um, to your to the best of your ability exactly yeah it's also good for them to have the ability to ask any questions um, sure. that they might have because they're probably they're probably you know with, you're, you're getting to close to the offer so you know there might be some things that'll come up for them um, especially if they've had other offers at other companies in the interim um, so it's a good chance to it's good to give them the opportunity to come back and see you as well because you're interviewing each other right okay cool so um, a little story here so even if you do all of this work um, you can still uh, you know do a bad hire I mean this is our second um, uh, recruitment firm and uh, just a little small example um, of you know is it why it's important to have that second interview and, and give that time to this process um, even with all of this in place you can hire the wrong person for the role and at, in Entreflow we had an accountant we hired who had um, who ultimately didn't have the skills for the job uh, required for the job even though he was a very seasoned accountant and in the end uh, we it was very costly for us to have somebody correct his work and then as well we lost a client through the whole mix um, so you know that extra hour invested in having that extra uh, that, that second in-person interview could save you you know what was for us you know three times salary pretty much in, in the mess that we had to clean up after that so the cost of hiring or sorry the cost of turnover is really expensive yeah and we're gonna do um, a, a blog post on uh, on the cost of turnover um, shortly and we'll share that with you later um, but uh, you know the do whatever you can now to make sure that you're doing everything you can to get the right people on the team because making a mistake is super costly, right? And even though even all your best uh, efforts, you, you could still, yeah. just, you know, you're dealing with people, not, not, not computers, right? Um, or machines. So, okay, next step um, is, uh, okay, so you've done the second interview, the team's all super excited, um, the person's all super excited, you're ready to offer, what do you do? Yeah, so next is, it's offer letter time. Um, and we refer to it as an offer letter on Entreflow, but it could also be known as an employment contract or um, an employee agreement. agreement. Yeah, so I mean, there's different um, titles for it. But so once you have your offer letter ready to go, I would pick up the phone, call the candidate, uh, tell them like, hey, we're ready to offer you this position. And you know, this is what we are offering. You know, go over the pay, go over, um, start date, vacation, all of the stuff that you know that the candidate should know, and then let them know that you're going to be emailing that employee or offer letter over to them, <laughs> and uh, that they can take a look at it and call you back with any questions or concerns that they may have, or you know, you really want to make sure that everybody's on the same page. And then if everything's good, uh, get them to email it back to you before their first day on the job, because if you have all of that out of the way and everybody's uh, you know on the same page awesome first day and the candidate can really focus in on just getting started on that job. Yeah, you really want to have the sign offer sorted, any negotiations yeah. done before the first day. You should not be signing offers in person on the first day. You should get that all sorted um, later on. You're, you're giving up the, their right to, to 
to negotiate in a comfortable environment. And negotiating is a really important thing for both parties. Some managers like to, you know, rush people into signing really quickly and not give them the time or not give them the opportunity to negotiate. And that's really going to shoot you in the foot because uh, it is something like, you know, two weeks vacation versus three weeks vacation that is the reason that people leave the job. Yeah. Or a two thousand uh, dollar rate, you know, salary. Uh, difference is enough for some people to leave a job and wouldn't you rather pay that person an extra two thousand dollars or give them an extra week of vacation or give them benefits right away instead of three months later it's not that much more for you um, then have to go through the effort of hiring because hiring is so expensive and like I said we're going to talk about the cost of turnover later but um, you know if you don't give them the right to put their hand up and say uh, you know salary is really important to me or you know the salary is fine but benefits are really important to me um, then you know you're potentially lose them later for something so small and trivial right okay so um, give them your best offer first as well okay so um, you know if you've discussed range you have to have a really good reason why you're not giving them something near the top end because they're gonna kind of expect that right so you know call that out um, and uh, be careful if you're offering ranges if they're too big or if you think that that range is Know, way above what you actually want to give to that person um, so but give them your best offer first don't give them an offer and say well let's see what they say and if we need to move give them your best offer first and, and then just reduce the chances of you potentially losing them to somebody else who's offered them what they wanted in the first place okay uh, so now uh, number 10 we're uh, we're going to give you some you know quick hacks on you know how to do this successfully so uh, one you probably heard of uh, everyone talks about this all the time, but hire slow, fire fast. So, uh, hire slow, not necessarily in a t from a time perspective, you gotta keep this, this train running quickly in your process, but you know, make sure you've got your, all your checks and balances, uh, all your checks in place to make sure that you're doing everything you can to hire the right person. If you have issues with this person um, on, or anyone on the team, make sure you deal with it right away. I'm not saying like one bad thing, fire them, but uh, you know, <laughs> if it's obvious that they're a bad fit, yeah you got to deal with it because um, a bad fit is the biggest culture killer to a team. It also shows to your rest of your team that you don't support them. If you're allowing someone who's not a good fit for the team to stick around and it's probably going, it's probably affecting them and their life and their work. Yeah, for sure. Okay, Bronwyn, what other hacks have you got? Um, just kind of along the lines with that is just to make sure that you have a really, really, really solid process in place and use your ATS um, to, to help with that because it'll help you guide the process along and as long as everybody's on the same page and they know what's next step what is expected of the next step and when you should be completing the next step um, it's just really gonna help move that candidate along and also just don't be afraid to really be in contact with the candidates that you're really interested in They're, everybody's understanding when life gets busy yeah. um, you're, you're running a business they get it um, and if you for whatever reason can't get them in for an interview just make sure you're following up with them and letting them know like, hey, we're still super interested in, in seeing you, but it's crazy right now. Can we call you back next week? Yeah. And also if, for those that you have invested time into talking with and meeting with, be courteous enough to give them a call or an email if they're they're not the right fit. If you find out at the end of the process that you're like, yeah, you know what, I still, I don't think they're gonna be a good fit for the company. Just give them a call and let them know why the, you know, you've chosen somebody else or you're gonna continue to look and just because they're really, they've invested their time and you've invested your time in meeting with this person and you wanna maybe save that person for a future hire if a job opens up that, you know, might be a better fit for them. Exactly, yeah, yeah for sure. Well, wasn't this a treat? <laughs> to have Bronwyn uh, on the on our segment today. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. No Not like you had anything else to do aside yeah. for drive the car. <laughs> and I hope the motion, uh, the motion sickness is uh, fading for you now. Um, and uh, thanks so much for watching another segment. Uh, I'm Helena from Entreflow. This is Bronwyn from Entreflow. And uh, we've got some tools below. Yeah. Um, uh, tell us what you think. Give us, share with us some of your hacks, your recruitment hacks. Oh, definitely share with us any like recruitment disaster stories. Yeah. Those are super fun for other people to hear. And uh, like, and we'll have an infographic coming to you with all this information for those of you who may have dropped off early because this video has gone on for 30 minutes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in Calgary. <laughs> Bye.